But when you catch a little black pest that eats the grapes, what do you do with him? Such a little black pest was Antonio Finamore, a local fascist party boss, brought to justice before a British military court. Now Antonio faces the accusations of his fellow villagers, an 82-year-old farmer who has suffered extortions from Antonio. A mother of three, starved by Antonio for three days. And then what happened to Antonio? Do you care? I don't. What is important is what happens now to Italy. In Naples, Count Sforza advises the people to rid themselves of the monarchy. Some agree. Others? In Italy now, politics are a total war in themselves. But at least in Naples, the port is open and working again. Only just, yet working. Most things that come in must be for war. But at least now, there is some flour. Now, new long and desperate queues. New agonies for a loaf. How long must Naples continue to be a battlefield? Then, like the last straw, a fresh calamity. Above Naples hangs an evil curtain of smoke. A fire to be extinguished? Not a fire. No human aid can help these victims, for their enemy is Vesuvius. An eruption like this occurs but once in 10 years. But for Carlos Vesuvius, when the moment comes, it is the moment. Even as Allied soldiers visit ruined Pompeii that the volcano once struck down, Vesuvius moves again to destroy and obliterate. Why do people live so close to Vesuvius? So near to creeping death? Because they have always done so? Because they never lose faith? Or is it because the wine from the grapes of these slopes is unusually good? But don't they realize that men call that wine Lacrima Christi, the tears of God? station by nature or by man. What difference does it make? On the path to Rome is Cassino, a little town at the foot of a great wall of mountain. There German resistance hardens and Cassino becomes a word for stubbornness and frustration. There for the time being the path to Rome is effectively closed. What does a soldier do in the long pauses between fighting? He writes home. Yet sometimes a breath of home comes even to the battlefield itself. In a little Italian town, a concert stage by, uh, what do they call it, um, Ensa, and for those who cannot get in, an unexpected performance by Tommy Trinder. You can't get in! <laughs> you unlucky people! <laughs> well, anyway, the best thing we can do is to work out in the open air. <laughs> really, I should be here in battle dress. You know, when I left England to come and work for Ensor, they said, uh, you'll have to wear a battle dress. I said, well, what's the idea? I mean, after all, I, I'm an actor, not a soldier. 
So she said, well, you'll have to wear a battle dress because if you get captured by the Germans, they'll shoot you. I said, if the Germans capture me, they're entitled to shoot me. <laughs> next, next thing, they, uh, they put me on an aeroplane. They yeah, put me on an aeroplane, flew me all the way out to Algiers. I eventually arrived at the aerodrome. Is that my voice or a brake squeaking? <laughs> Good afternoon, rich people. <laughs> anyway. First Americans I've seen not riding in a jeep. <laughs> oh, they've all got their own personal jeeps. <laughs> yeah. Same as this one they've given me. Gave it to me instead of a gas mask. <laughs> I, do you know, I, I feel this afternoon like a screen lover. <laughs> <laughs> do you know, I, I once made a picture for MGM. You know the beginning of an MGM film where Leo the Lion comes out and goes, Bleh. came out at the beginning of my picture, but he didn't roar. <laughs> Just went, 